welcome to another episode of Impact Yobe. This is where we bring you stories about developmental activities of the administration of Mai Malabuni in Yobe State, the pride of the Sahel. In this episode of the program, we bring you stories about the development of education by the administration, such as the construction of model and mega schools across the state. My name is Mark Otabo. Thank you for joining us. The Yobe State Governor, Mai Malabuni, says he is not opposed to local government autonomy, which he described as the best form of democracy for grassroots development. Governor Boni stated this after casting his vote in the local government elections in his hometown, Bonigeri. The governor commended voters for turning out to vote for the preferred candidates. Out of the voters, and of course, uh, that's democracy for you, is to uh, give the people the right to cast their uh, votes, that is to exercise their civic rights. And that is what we just saw, and I'm highly impressed with the outcome. Well, I'm not opposed to local government autonomy. When I came on board in 2019, my concept was to give autonomy to the local government. Unfortunately, uh, about six out of the 17 local governments that we have in Yobe State can't even pay their salaries. So the wisdom behind this joint account uh, complementing the efforts of uh, the local governments with the states working together in executing some projects is an idea that is, I think, muted out of these uh, shortfalls because uh, you can't go ahead and be, start retrenching people simply because of all these uh, difficulties. But, of course, this is Nigeria and, of course, our democracy is growing. Before we know it, it shall be addressed seamlessly democratically without it. The Yobe State Governor, Mayor Malabuni, has inaugurated an amphibious excavator swamp boogie to clear water channels and tackle the menace of flooding in affected communities. Governor Boni explained that it became necessary to procure the heavy-duty equipment to clear blocked channels for free flow of water. It is aimed at clearing our waterways, especially our wetland, for free flow of water, especially along the Komodugu, Yobe, and all other attaching tributaries. This will go a long way in addre addressing the climate change impact, especially uh, in, uh, around the water, uh, water areas, because we have uh, experienced a lot of devastation arising from the floods, which of course we are sure this, with this machine, a lot of these problems will be addressed. will afford our farmers, especially those who are into irrigation farming during the dry season and, and others, and of course our fishermen also, uh, to benefit from this very important uh, uh, project. The Yobe State government has constructed sesame processing factory in Machina community and four other local government areas of the state. The construction of the factory is part of measures by the state government to boost production of sesame on a large scale. During a media tour of the factory in Machina, officials of the state government explained that the sesame seed processing factory was sited in the area to ease work of farmers in the communities. Speaking with journalists after the tour, the State Commissioner for Commerce, Kegama Umar, said the government will continue to invest heavily in sesame production for adequate exports. We used to take our product to Kano and the other part of the country where these machines are being uh, established. So this is the reason why we are the major producer. Why should you take it somewhere? This is the reason why we establish our own factory here. So our not only uh, cleaning and processing or packaging our own, we are also equally inviting other uh, farmers from other parts of the country to come and uh, uh -huh, take advantage of this machine, clean and process, package for onward uh, uh, exportation. The Yobe State Ministry of Commerce has signed an agreement with contractors for the construction of two new markets 
in Ngada and Unisari communities. Speaking after the signing of the agreement, the State Commissioner for Commerce, Kegama Umar, said Governor May Malabuni approved construction of the market to boost economy activities in the two benefiting communities. In fulfillment of his electioneering campaign, His Excellency the Executive Governor of Yobe State, Honorable May Malabuni, CON Turoman Gujuba, During the campaign, he made a lot of promises, among which he is going to boost the economy of the state. Based on this, he awarded contract for the construction of five ultramodern markets in five, five major towns of the state, starting from the state capital, Damaturu, Potiskum, Guru, Gaidam and Geshua, out of which three were completed and commissioned. Two are nearly completion, that is Gaidam and Portiscum. Today, based on his approval, we are going to sign two more, uh, add two more towns, that is Yunusari and Ngalda. The State Commissioner for Higher Education, Belo Kawua, who is from one of the benefiting communities, commended Governor May Malabuni for the foresight and fulfilling of his campaign promises to the people of the state. During his engineering campaign, our people asked for a modern market. When he was inaugurated as executive governor of Yobe State in 2019, he pledged to build an ultra-modern market in Galda town, uh, in Galda town of Pika local government area. And today, we are witnessing the signing of that contract after all the due processes have been completed. So, this is a clear manifestation of Apada Achika by our governor. That means when he makes a promise, he will fulfill it. And a clear testimony that Buli, Buni Alherine, because this is a clear testimony that a lot of goodies are going to come the way of our people with the completion of this modern market. We want to say thank you to His Excellency, the Deputy Governor, for fulfilling his pledge. On his part, the State Commissioner for Housing and Urban Development, Ahmed Buba, explains the mood of supervision for the successful execution of the market projects. As the Ministry of Housing, uh, we are actually mandated to monitor every public building that is being constructed in the state. Um, first of all, the design was initiated by our ministry. We produce all the documents and it is our responsibility to ensure that uh, the contract is duly signed and the contractor would stick to all the specifications. The Damaturu International Cargo Airport will soon commence commercial operations. The permanent secretary in the Yobe State Ministry of Transport and Energy, Isiaka Lawan, gave the assurance in Damaturu, the state capital. Speaking with journalists during a media tour of the airport, the permanent secretary stated that 39 billion naira was spent on the airport project. The International Cargo Airport, constructed by Yobe, said the work started in 2017. And the total cost the government expended on the project is about 39 billion naira. It is constructed as a cargo airport because in the whole northeast region there is no cargo airport. That is the necessity why we felt it is good we have the cargo airport international. It is now 95% completed and aircraft are landing at the airport. Of course it's only day operation we are doing because we are yet to install our runway Latin. We are going to do it in the next three months. The airport essentially has uh, different components, like the terminal building where we are standing here, the runway, the air traffic, uh, the control tower, the fire station, the powerhouse, there's admin block, and the maintenance office, and of course, mosque for worship. Now, talking about the government, Mimala, very quickly, uh, yeah. how have you been able to 
you know, intensify the effort of having teachers come into play to actually saturate the schools that have been established. Because we know the uh, problem of teachers, yeah. you know, is always an issue with education, having them yeah. to come to teach. So how has the government been able to put that uh, particular, you know, problem to rest? One thing which, will, which may surprise you is that, uh, you know, we have that problem. But uh, in his magnanimity, Governor Maimala, now uh, uh, some few months back, hmm. We have employed more of NC and diploma holders, Beautiful. and uh, uh, he now asks Ministry for Local Government hmm. to be paying those ones. And I think in their fair roll, uh, we have about ten thousand, wow. which is being paid through Ministry of Local Government. Hmm. So, uh, uh, in reality, our schools were equipped. Well equipped. Both the teachers, lab, lab equipment, hmm. and other material which will give a conducive environment, a learning and teaching environment, environment. For, for both the students and the teachers. Hmm. All right, now can you take us through the process of uh, how you've been able to strike partnerships, you know, to have, uh, you know, to partner with, uh, you know, agencies or possibly you know, uh, organizations to actually aid the education in the state because I know that sometimes the burden can be very overwhelming, but partnerships also play a very giant role. So has there been any uh, plan in that regard? Yeah, actually, uh, we had, uh, we have been enjoying partnering with these donor agencies, especially uh, 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 these uh, donor agencies in the state as okay. you know we had a bitter experience what happened to us on previous years Absolutely. and uh, we had a st steering committee meeting hmm. in my degree Beautiful. from tuesday up to thursday all right uh if not because of logistics problems uh, by now uh, we'll be in liberia hmm. because uh, you know liberia being a war torn country so uh, they had a bitter experience like ours so we want to go and see things for ourselves Yourself. so that how do they how do they do it? How do they do it? Okay. So the state of, uh, we have uh, the state of Bay State, that is Borno, Adamawa, and Yobi. Yeah. So we were in my degree for the National Steering Committee meeting so to Liberia. But uh, due to some uh, coordination, coordination problems, we mm. couldn't make that trip. But uh, at the end of the day, these people are actually argumenting mm. they are supporting the government seriously wow. and uh, we we actually enjoy partnering with them right yeah from your assessment and from the uh, report you have been getting so far yeah. how would you rate the performance of some of these students uh, over time actually the performance is overwhelming uh, and uh, the, both the parents and the students were eager hmm. to, learn. to learn and uh, one thing I forgot to inform you is that you know we have a cluster extension hmm. And, uh, I was going to ask that. Anyway. Okay. I was going uh, to ask actually, that. Uh, on annual basis, mm. once the, uh, their final exam is around the corner, mm. we do write to their parents mm. that these people will not be going for their uh, second term holidays. Mm. We have to camp them in specific centers. Mm. For example, we have uh, three towns for the senatorial districts yeah. that is there is center here in Damatru. Yeah. We have two of them, one in GGC Damatru, one in GSS Damatru. Mm. So in the other zone in Portisum, we have three centers. Mm. That is in GGC, Pika GSS, and Gaman Science Secondary School, Portisum. Mm. So also, last but not the least, in Guru, we have at least three centers. Mm. That is GGC, GSS, and then Gaman College. And uh, actually, camping those students just f for the next three weeks, it makes a lot of difference. A, a lot of difference, right? Because we, the teachers were there with them, with them, all the core core subjects, that is English, mathematics, mathematics. inclusive. Yeah. So we gave them thorough training, uh, training and revisions. Hmm. The, 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 the first questions were at their fingertips. Hmm. So at the end of the day you will see wonders. Hmm. As I have told you earlier, last year we have performance of over 74%. Beautiful. And uh, this year we were expecting nothing less than 85. 
Yeah. I, I must commend this particular program. Now, yeah. the cluster extension uh, program that you just, you're just talking about now, yeah. what gave rise to it and how did you guys come up with the idea? Actually, you know, uh, uh, here in education, we are team players. Hmm. Uh, we work as a team hmm. so that uh, being almost all of them were teachers. Okay. At the initial stage, stage. so later they become directors and deputy directors. Hmm. So they know, they have the know-how. Hmm. So being working as a team, you understand? Mm -hmm. uh, once you give them the sense of belonging, they will come up with whatever. Ideas. Uh, ideas, you know? So actually, uh, from PA, when I was appointed as uh, permanent secretary, secretary, when I was posted as permanent secretary, Minister of uh, Education, mm -hmm. uh, I'm an accountant by profession. By profession. So okay. I said, okay, how, how will I take this? Mm -hmm. But once uh, I came in, I, the people were wonderful. Wow. Yeah, and uh, actually, sky will be our limit. Absolutely. And with the support we are getting from the government, actually, mm. uh, uh, things will be very, very easy. All right. Yeah. I want you to uh, tell the world uh, what to expect more with your program as a permanent secretary, because we know that uh, you have done a lot already, the class yeah. extension program, uh, the establishment of 19 schools from between last year and this year, which is quite huge. Uh, are there any other plans in place you are projecting for education in Yobe State? Yeah, we are planning uh, for, because uh, things are very hard Absolutely. these days economically. Uh, this thing is not unique. Uh, it's not unique to Yobe or Nigeria. It's True. worldwide. Absolutely. And uh, for, for a government to have thousands of students, in the school at the same time. time and taking into consideration yeah. our bitter experience some previous years yes. you know it's not an easy thing to convince parents that yeah. security wise yes. we don't have any problem yeah. so also pedin we don't have any problem no, no. Hmm. so uh, due to the population and the need hmm. for the students hmm. we as those some schools that i've mentioned earlier hmm. were made to be the secondary school. Okay, good. So we have that accept acceptance, but that notwithstanding, things are a bit hard. But, okay. but your best state is open to it. All right. Be, uh, quickly before yeah. before you go, uh, I know that something as good as this would attract other neighboring states. Yeah. Now, in a case where neighboring states are beginning to, s beginning to see what is happening in Yobe State and decide to want to come here and yeah. enjoy the education, yeah. how do you think you'll be able to handle the influx of uh, the multitude that might be coming to Yobe State to add to the already no, you know, no, large no, number we uh, have here? Uh, there's no problem. They can, uh, we, have, we have them. All right. But, uh, you know, once you are being admitted, first and foremost, what we do consider is, are you an indigenous of the state? Okay. You just need to establish that. Yeah. Good. Once you have the indigent certificate, you don't have any You're problem. You're good enough. All right. good enough. But, uh, you know, uh, we are brother skippers. Absolutely. Somebody from Borno mm -hmm. who uh, can decide to get admission to, for his award in Yobe. Yeah, yeah. We cannot deny him. I am calling on the Fiarians, especially the Fiarians. Okay. Uh, we have their support. Right. But we need more. Hmm. We need more support so that the children shouldn't be malingering in the street. Hmm. The schools are there, right. and it is theirs. Hmm. So if we don't get those schools who will occupy these slots for us, oh. we have, uh, after having the basic education, hmm. we have our university, the state university, hmm. we have federal university uh, domicile in Geshua, oh. so, and some other tertiary institutions. Right. So at the end of the day, I think it is high time Let's occupy the space. Okay. okay. Now, in a case whereby the students have uh, gone through this process of the education you have provided for them, what happens to students who are not so able to catch up and you have a feeling? Do you have any plans for them to go into skilled working, yeah. uh, any skilled working mechanism to actually get them we, we, to uh, also participate in yeah, the society? Yeah, we, have, we have that one. Okay. We have those, uh, who, uh, we have those ones. Skill that acquisition. Skill acquisitions. Okay. We have them right now, we have them in Damatu. Okay. And the 
the, the other two senatorial districts. Beautiful. That is in Potiskum and in Keshua too. Absolutely. Uh, which will take care of the school ac uh, acquisitions. acquisitions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you very much for, uh, for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Nice All to right. meet you. All right. You just heard it from him, Haji Buka Aji, talking about the advancement that has happened in the state regarding education. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education. Let's not leave out the fact that 19 schools have been established between last year and this year. And over 10,000 teachers have been employed to do the job of teaching the students. And of course, the cluster extension program which has been provided for students to come into a camp where they sit there for over a month to revise towards having their final exam. And that's all we have for you on today's episode on Impact UBE. Don't forget to join us next week for a fresh edition of the program. My name is Marco Tabo. See you next time.